Welcome back guys to Voicey here and another r slash entitled parents. Don't forget Voicey veterans to like, subscribe and hit that bell to never miss an episode. This story was called, EP Tries to Steal My Autistic Brother's DSI. This story happened like 9 or 10 years ago, like 2010 and around Christmas time. And it's about my brother, around 6 at the time. My dad and me at 9. So on to the story. Me and my brother were packing our stuff to go to Houston to visit some of my dad's relatives for Christmas. We were going to spend Christmas at our uncle's house, so we brought all the Christmas presents and so forth. Going from Dallas to Houston was at least 4 hours on car, so my parents were worried that my brother was going to be throwing a fit throughout the car ride. My brother is autistic. At the time it was pretty severe that he couldn't speak. So we spoke sign language to him and I knew the basics like if he needed to poo or was hungry, etc. When we went on long car rides, he easily gets tired for sitting for so long and he tends to kick the front seats of the car or harm himself like scratching his face. Fast forward to the trip. Mum and Dad were looking at each other like they were sharing a secret and they let my brother open one of his presents early. I was shocked. My parents had bought my brother a Nintendo DSi XL with the Super Mario Brothers game. These were the hottest toys on Christmas, and me and my brother wanted one so badly. And now he finally had one. The rest of the car ride was me and my brother fighting over the DS in Who Got To Play, until I was forced to give him the DS for the rest of the trip. Mum gave me a nasty glare and I shut up. Before we went to Houston, we stopped at Wharton to pick up some relatives and give some gifts. We stopped at a Bucky's nearby and went inside to get a bite. My mum was fueling up the car and my dad went inside to take a pee and told me to watch my brother until he was gone. We were browsing the Bucky's plushies aisle and noticed EP staring at us. I felt weirded out but I continued to look at the Bucky's keychains when I heard a sickening shriek right next to me. I stood in horror when I saw EP prying my brother's DS away from him. To my brother's credit, for a six year old he put up a fight. He was screaming his lungs out and relentlessly kicking EP to let go of his DS. I didn't know what to do, but then I yanked my brother and the DS out of EP's grip and stared her down. EP looked to be in her 40s with a badass Texas mum shirt and the ugliest short Karen hairstyle that screamed let me speak to your manager. EP looked like someone spat at her and said, Little girl give that back to me, it's mine. And if you don't give that back, I'm going to talk to your parents for stealing. I was like, what the heck, is this lady insane? So I said back, no, that's my brother's. I saw you trying to take it from him. I was beyond scared of this lady and was stepping away when she lunged at me to try and take the DS back again. Thankfully, my dad came back and stepped in between us and EP and scooped my brother up to calm him down. EP is probably re-strategizing or something because she immediately plastered the fakest grin I've ever seen and says, Your son just stole my son's game and I want you to hand it back. I noticed behind her was a small timid kid hiding behind EP's legs. My dad stays deadpan and says, This game belongs to my boy. I don't want to see you bothering my kids again. My dad is a big burly guy and is coming off really intimidating. He PCs that she isn't going to get the DS, so she throws one last punch. My son needs that game, and I can't give it to him. He deserves it, besides your weaker son doesn't need it. He's probably too stupid to remember he was using. My son deserves it more. She was still ranting on, but I was so furious at EP. How dare she talk to my brother like that? But before I could say anything, my dad got real serious and sternly told her, Get the heck out of here. I better not catch you again because I will call the cops on you for harassing my kids. That got EP to shut up. She huffs and takes her leave, not before cursing us out as she left. When everything died down, the few people who were watching the whole drama asked if we were alright and stuff like that. We bought some snacks and my dad got us some plushies before we left. The rest of our holidays were great and thankfully the incident didn't dampen our Christmas too much. Now every year that we go to Houston, my dad retells the story of the crazy Bucky's lady and seems to add more details every year like EP was a terrifying troll that stole the gifts of children on Christmas Eve. And if you find her in the Bucky's deli aisle, she'll haunt your dreams forever. 
This was my first encounter of an entitled parent. My brother still finds it hilarious every year that dad tells the story. Thankfully he has improved his speech so much thanks to all the speech therapies and he can now somewhat properly speak. I love him to death even though he's such a brat sometimes. I hope today EP isn't out there stealing other kids toys and hope karma comes around and gives her payback. You know the saying, go pick on someone your own size. Well I wonder if for an EP that's why they always choose to pick on kids. Anytime they actually have to deal with a parent, there's no sense of rationality or logic that enables them to justify any action that they're taking. This story was called, Ia makes both me and my brother quit our jobs, but refuses to acknowledge she had any hand in it. My childhood was meant for this sub. It shall be my home away from petty revenge. To start with, some backstory. My mum was an Air Force brat, and her dad wiggled away from being arrested for something terrible that affects her to this day. Not an excuse for what she did to us. She married a guy in the Navy and had my brother, Donald, not real name, he's just a lot like the character, over a year after I was born. Childhood was a picture perfect example of being raised by a narcissist, and that's a whole other load of baggage I have to deal with. But not here. You'll want to hear how she made us quit two separate jobs in the span of a month. You see, I was in community college and had no car, so I took the bus everywhere. Not the best public transit system ever, but for $30 you could get a monthly pass that allowed you unlimited rides for the month. And after four days to and from school, it paid for itself in savings. Donald worked for a very popular grocery store, and he got his preferred task of retrieving carts from the parking lot. He loved it since he didn't really have to deal with customers, and the store was fine with having a guy who didn't mind harassing the bums who tried to take the carts off the property. Since retrieving each cart actually costs a fair bit, the trip to work from home took 45 minutes. Same for the return trip, and he worked part-time at minimum wage. I worked for the National Oceanographic and Atmospheric Association at their Southwest Fisheries Branch, and due to its location it usually brought on student hires from UC. I worked for the Ictoplankton Department, which includes larval fish, and it was my job to curate their historical fish collection, label, relabel, organize, and catalog their database, so the samples could be studied at length, since the data was used to track health of the fish offshore, and the data was useful to the fish and game department, for what they could and couldn't do for the year, to keep the fishing trade strong. I loved it. Loved my boss and ignored the UC hires who looked down on the community college girl. I took 45 minutes to get from school to work, worked 5 to 5.5 five hours a day, and was paid $11 an hour, which was a bit above minimum wage. Trip home after was another 45 minutes. Somehow this reliable and paid work offended mum, and she spent three months moaning and whining about it taking so long for us to get home and get to work. Wouldn't it be better to work closer to home? Blah blah blah. While that may be true for Donald, the location he was at was who was hiring and NOAA only had the one location in town. Anyone familiar with any bus system knows there's also delays. Buses arriving late due to traffic, relief drivers being delayed due to traffic, and the like. So it sometimes took an hour to an hour and 12 minutes to get home. An oddly specific amount. Donald and I planned accordingly for arriving to work on time, and we both always got to our shifts early and clocked in promptly. Every delay on the way home was met with accusations of listening to music too loud or playing our portable games and not paying attention to the point that every time she asked why we were home late, one day we both answered, the bus didn't show up on time and no, not because of the Game Boy. This answer was met with a hurt expression and a rebuke for not being about to ask that. Finally, I'd had enough and I recorded her whine one day about the bus's long trips and played it for my boss who knew about my mum from time in Girl Scouts, as both served in a local service unit organising programs for younger girls. She believed me, and despite it not being normal for the department, they arranged for a party, usually reserved when UC hires were done for their semester, to see me off properly. It was lovely, and I missed them all very much. I loafed miserably in my room until my final paycheck was mailed. I had only worked there for seven months. She asked me what made me decide to quit, as if she weren't solely responsible for it. Because I was tired of you whining about how long it took to get to work. 
Donald loved his job, but spending six hours on pavement took its toll, and he often bought insoles to minimize impact and strain caused by it, and was in fairly consistent, low-grade pain. A mere two weeks after I quit, he quit, and mum couldn't be happier. Preening about how good it would be, not having him angry at home because of the strain of the work, but wondering why he didn't request a transfer to the branch that was a seven minute walk away from home instead. Because I was tired of you complaining about how long it took to get to and from work. Dad believed the both of us and said he understood as mum was being unreasonable. Edit, mum hasn't worked a paid job since 1997 and routinely tried to sabotage my brother and I when we got work so we'd stay home. Then she'd whine we didn't have jobs. She recited the importance of showing up to work on time, but when we took her up on the offers to drive us to work, she always left late, forcing us to be late. Yeah, that sounds like a mother who wants to stay in power no matter what. And unfortunately, the workforce is competition to her power, as it means someone else requires the attention of her children, and her children become that much more independent. It's perfect for her because she can make them feel bad about being late for work, meanwhile lecturing them about how it's wrong to be late for work. Like, you just can't win with a parent like that. Post your stories, memes, and fan art at r slash voicey here. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell to never miss an episode. Alright voicey veterans, I'll see you in the next one.